took turns this morning and played at different times. I want to thank all the drummers, all the guitar players and the singers. You guys are awesome this morning. It was just wonderful. Hallelujah. I pray that you all took time to worship today. Took the opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want to remind you today, hallelujah, God's not mad at you. Did you hear that? God is not mad at you. God does not hate you. He's not trying to punish you. Hallelujah. You know what punishes you the most? The decisions you make without God in the mix and the consequences that you receive because you made those decisions without asking him first. He is not judging you. Aren't you glad? Come on now. 2,000 years ago, on this lighted cross up here, God took all his judgment for your sin, and he put it on Jesus on the cross. So you don't have that anymore. Aren't you glad? Woohoo! Hallelujah. Well, I don't know, you guys a little tired this morning because of the holiday? You seem a little lug sluggish? We do have coffee out in the, out in the foyer, so. Amen. You need to get going this morning. Hallelujah. We're like the Jeffersons. We're moving on up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be His holy name. Well, if you've got your uh, offering or your tithe this morning, we're going to offer this as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for the giving of your Son. We are most like you when we give. We actually are most like you when we give generously because you give so generously to us. I ask you to bless this offering in abundance today, God. Use this for this church to reach the people in this area that need you desperately. We thank you that you've sent us to a place a lot of people won't go. A lot of Christians think this is just too bad, too, too many needs, too hard. But I thank you, Father, that Jesus said one time, is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> thank you, Father, for touching this region of Pekin with your love and your forgiveness. Now, Father, bless this abundantly. Bless those that give this morning, as it says in the book of Luke, press down, shaken together, and running over. Father, give back into them. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, Sky. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Amen. Yeah, just a few announcements this morning. I think Shane will have those up on the board behind me. Um, and I've got a few here I want to make sure I hit. And Deb says she wants to say something about Women's Fellowship that's coming up this Saturday. If you would like to be on the prayer line, and uh, we do have some prayer requests this morning that I need to remember. So I'm going to write these down while I'm thinking about it. Randy Engelbrecht needs our prayers. He's in Pekin Hospital, and uh, they're treating him for his heart. He's been having a lot of heart pain, but uh, he's doing much better this morning. Mary texted me this morning and said that he'll probably be released today, but we need to pray for Randy. And how I see Judy here this morning, and it just reminded me of Jerry. So we need to pray for Jerry today. Just lift him up. Bless him in Jesus' name. Any other prayer requests this morning while I'm at it? Jane. Okay. Lance A.G., good brother in the Lord. There was years ago he came here and started playing his guitar and played in the worship band. We want him to come, come home. So let's call him home. Pray for him. Amen. Anybody else have prayer requests this morning? Yes, we need to pray for my son, Chris, for sure. Amen. Yeah. Carl, who's here this morning. I think I saw him. He's in the bathroom, but praise God, he's here. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. We all need that for sure. Amen. Now's the time, my brothers and sisters. We are not in a hurry today. I don't have anywhere to go. The prayers don't play till 3. Kathy. Praise God. Jennifer, right? Stephanie. Well, that's close.
shoulder surgery, Braxton. All right. But praise God that Stephanie had a successful carpal tunnel surgery on Friday. Praise God for that. Amen. Chrissy. That's okay. Amen. 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 We agree with you right now, Chrissy, for that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lisa. Up in here. Praise. Let's give the Lord a hand for that one. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Chrissy, just keep fighting that good fight of faith, sis. Don't you give up or lose hope. I believe God's going to continue to move in your body. We just come against that and curse that arthritis. Command it to leave you in Jesus' name. Linda. Amen. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Praise God. That, make me cry. Cut that out. Don't do that. I don't want to be a crybaby preacher. Amen. Angela. Lord's will in your son's life. His name is William. That is a very good name. Because that's my name too. <laughs> Kelly. Okay. Absolutely. We will. Amen. Mr. Bunton. Hallelujah. That is awesome. Amen. That's wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. And I just want you all to know that God touched Brett's dad. We had been praying for him for two or three months, there was some issue as to whether or not he had cancer, but he is cancer free. That is just an amazing miracle. It'd probably even be a greater miracle if Brett get a Cub jersey, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> thought I saw a hand over here. Aileen. Okay. Amen. Okay. Okay, we will pray for Annabelle this morning and her relationship with her dad. That's a great thing. If he can reconcile an uncle and a nephew, he can he can reconcile this situation. Hallelujah. Um, we need to continue to lift Aileen up too as she goes through these treatments. We're praying that instead of twelve, there's only going to be eight. That's what the Lord told me. There was only going to be eight. I think that's cool. A whole third of them gone. I pray that's the case. We'll see if that's a word from the Lord or not. Yes. Oh, she's your cousin? I did not know that. Okay, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pray for her kids. Okay. We will. Hallelujah. And your sobriety. Amen. How? How long? 89 days. Congratulations. Amen. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Doesn't matter if it's 89 years, 89 minutes, or 89 days, it's one day at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a song about that. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Who wrote that? I think Chris Christofferson wrote that when he was going through his own sobriety. So, hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lynette. Yes? Amen. 
Amen. Yes. Praise God. Lynette got a devotional for every day of the year, and we're just going to bless that to bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to have you, before I read the rest of the announcements, <laughs> we got kind of sidetracked, but that's okay. Let's gonna, we're going to stand and pray for all these needs real quick, okay? Hallelujah. And since Jenna mentioned this, I know there's many of you that are really fighting and struggling for your sobriety, whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever it might be. And I just want you to know that my heart and the heart of New Life Fellowship is that you bring every drunk and every addict into this place you can possibly find. I don't care if they're still drunk if you bring them. Somebody said, that's terrible to come to church. I've had, I had somebody not too long ago, it might have been this last year, two or three people. I remember one guy in particular walked in the door. He just walked right down front. He smelled like he had just gotten drunk and he was a little woozy. We prayed for him and he walked out of here and he was not wobbly when he left. God's heart is for you that are struggling with addiction to be free. We sang about his freedom this morning, amen? He wants you to be free. Now, there's also other things that tie us down. Some of you really struggle with a religious spirit, and you need to be careful of what that means. That's judgmentalism. We don't want that in this place. Amen? So we need to ask God for the strength to rebuke that and not have that overtake us. We don't want to be judgmental. Amen? Hallelujah. So bow your heads with me. Father, we lift up Randy Engelbrecht this morning. We thank you for touching him and Mary. Thank you, Lord, for giving him a clean bill of health for his heart. He'll be able to come home today. And for Jerry, for healing for him this morning. We pray for Lance Ag. We call him out, God, that he'll come back here. He's part of this family. We pray for his uh, decision he's going to make. Give him wisdom. For our son, Chris, Lord, that you touch him, God, and call him back to relationship with you. Hallelujah. We lift up Carl today, who's here. We just ask you, God, to touch Carl and strengthen that man of God. Lord, help him know who he really is in Christ. Hallelujah. For Chrissy this morning, we curse that arthritis in the name of Jesus. We command that arthritis to let her go. Spirit of infirmity, get off of her in the name of Jesus. We thank you for blessing Cole and keeping him free of any of this in Jesus' name. For Angela's son, William, this morning, God, we ask you to touch that boy. God, do a work in his heart, Lord. We call him out in the name of Jesus, out of darkness and into the light. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. For Jordan and for all of the decisions that Kelly and her family and, and uh, Dwayne are going to be making, give them wisdom. Touch Jordan today. Touch their family. Touch their kids and grandkids, God. Do a work in their lives in Jesus' name. We thank you for Brett this morning and the good report he's given. Touch his mom and dad. Lord, I think of his brother Ryan today. Touch Ryan today, God. Move in that man in the name of Jesus. David's dad this morning, Father, who's fighting cancer, we lift him up to you. We ask for a clean bill of health. God, strengthen that man of God. We lift him up to you. Bless David and the family, Lord, as they go through this. God, give him peace. Touch Annabelle this morning that her relationship with her dad will be restored in a way that's healthy. God, in Jesus' name. And for Aileen, that the treatments will be unnecessary in the name of Jesus. Give her strength. Give her her energy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For Jenna's kids and for her sobriety, strengthen that woman of God. We lift her up to you, God. We ask you to just do a great work in her life. Pour your spirit in, God, of just peace and joy. Oh, in the Holy Spirit, we thank you for that now. And in Jesus' precious name. And everybody cried out, Amen. You can be seated. i got to give you the announcements, and then we'll go ahead and let the kids get out of here. Um, hallelujah. Don't forget this morning, the blessing room is going to be closed uh, Tuesday and Wednesday due to the holiday. That's the 31st and the 1st. Now, tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, you're all invited to a couple hours of fellowship from 5 to 7, and then we're going to have a movie uh, on the big screen at, uh, after the 7 o'clock fellowship is done. Uh, sh we should be out of here at about 10. Um, the movie we're going to be playing is Apollo Creed, I think, right? You haven't even seen it yet. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. And there are a lot of good Christian movies I saw back in the office. And if you'd like to borrow one of these movies, please let us know. You sign a sheet of paper, let us know, and we'll let you take it out. You can take it home. We've got Courageous. We've got God's Not Dead, Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. You're welcome to use them. Wow, awesome. Praise God. Yes, Denise. Are we going to have food? Bring munchies if you want to. Amen. That'd be awesome. We'll have leftovers from today. And uh, yes, we absolutely will have stuff uh, for that time. Hallelujah. That's my dinner time usually. So I'll bring, uh, maybe I'll bring a big keto salad. I would like to, I would like to have a big keto salad. All right. Somebody said, what is that? You have to, you have to come tomorrow and find out. I ain't telling you. Uh, Wednesday night live in the School of the Spirit. This Wednesday we'll, re we'll return at 630 Thursday night renewal, 6.30. We are finishing up Psalm 23. That has been so rich. It's such a great blessing uh, in that study. And Women's Fellowship is next Saturday at 10. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Deb. Amen. We need to make sure that it's Women's Fellowship because Ty has come to Women's Fellowship before. And, uh, you know, we had to, we had to tell him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And during tax season, we will have a big blow-up picture of Ty and his sunglasses so that you can get to really see how cool he is. Amen. All right. I think... Uh, did I hit all the announcements, Shane? Did I get them all? All right, praise God. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the kids to Kid Zone and uh, make sure that they turn the heater off back there. Uh, we don't want any of the kids running into the heater. So, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Thank God for kids and Kid Zone. Sarah and uh, Deb are back there this morning, so pray for them and Pray for these wonderful children. Amen. Hallelujah. She wants the, she wants the shark. I don't know if you've seen the uh, Baby Sharky song, <laughs> but if you've seen Baby Sharky, you've got to go on YouTube and watch it when the girls did it for uh, the talent show. <laughs> that was uh, pretty special. Amen. Hallelujah. So glad you're here this morning. I got a short word today. Uh, I knew we were going to spend a little extra time praising and worshiping. Aren't you glad we did? The last Sunday of the month, we spent more time praising and worshiping during a service than we've done all year long, and I think it was really, it was really good today. Hallelujah. Um, so a man walks into a restaurant with his dog, and I want to remind you that we do scour the Internet for these uh, wonderful jokes. They're the best in the world, right? Chrissy, thank you for, I appreciate that. Just for that, for that, you get to go first in line today. Um, <laughs> he goes to this restaurant and says to the waitress, this is a talking dog, if the dog can answer my questions, will you give me a free breakfast? She said, I'll tell you what, if this dog can talk, you can have a free breakfast. So the man turns as his dog and says this, what goes on top of a house? Roof. So the guy says, here's question number two, Henry. What does tree bark feel like? The dog says, rough. That's right, Cole. So the man says, who is the greatest baseball 
player ever. Little puppy. Dog looks up at him with expectant eyes, his little nose wet, and says, Ruth. Anybody ever heard of Babe Ruth? So, uh, he was not a cardinal, thank God. So the, so the waitress, clearly annoyed, as many of you may be annoyed right now by this question, snaps at the man, that's enough. You and your dog get out of here right now. After the man and dog are thrown out, or as they're walking out the door, the dog, walking alongside his owner, sadly looks at him and says, should I have said Willie Mays? Well, just because you guys like that one, I've got another one. This is the story of a frog. So, anybody like frogs in here? I'm sorry? No, this... this <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that, Chrissy. Thank you. I love it that she comes because she always keeps me on task. You know what I mean? A frog goes to a fortune teller, which you should never do, but this frog did anyway, and asks if he'll ever be lucky in love. And the fortune teller reads his palm. I, I didn't know a frog had a palm, but apparently this one did. I have good news and I have bad news, Mr. Frog. What would you like to hear first? The frog asks for the good news first, and the fortune teller says you're going to meet the most beautiful girl who's going to be very interested in you and will want to know all about you. She will want to open you up for her and you will give her your heart. That's great, says the frog. What's the bad news? You're going to meet her in biology class. Now that's funny. I don't care who you are. Now that you've been thoroughly entertained, now we get to the challenge part. Hallelujah. So let's do this real quick. Let's bow our heads and pray. Amen. After those wonderful jokes. Father, we just ask you this morning to open our hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit of God would say to the church in this last day. Lord, we want to follow you, not just half-heartedly, but completely. Lord, we want to be a, a, a people that is humble, that knows we don't have it together, and we want to be repentant and follow you in all of our life. So we pray this morning that you speak to every heart and mind, and we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. This is the last Sunday of 2018. So now we're looking ahead. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3, forgetting those things that which are behind. We press forward. We press. We look forward. So I just want to encourage you this morning. 2019 is going to be a great year for you. Amen. Start believing. Well, you're not too convinced, but start believing this in your heart. Amen. Come on, church. Remember the saying for this year is Jesus is supreme in 2019. He needs to be number one. He needs to be first in all of your life. Can you say amen? I pray this year will be a year that we all put God first in all we are and in all that we do. First in all that we are and all that we do. Hallelujah. For New Life Fellowship, the vision, this is the vision. You want to know what our vision is? You want to know what we're here for? You know why God sent us here? 12 years ago, this is our 13th year, hallelujah, our lucky year. The vision is to reach those who have no hope. Do you know somebody that feels hopeless, feels down, has no hope, has no life, has no future, feels like they've lost it all? Bring them to church. That's what we're here for. I will guarantee that if you bring them here, they'll feel the touch of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. God's vision for us is he brought us here to touch those who feel like they're lonely. You know lonely people out there? Bring them to church. Look at all these empty chairs. We've got empty chairs upstairs. We could fill this whole place full of lonely people. Amen? People that go to a bar that feel lonely, even though they got people all around them and there's all kind of noise, but they still feel isolated and lonely. Those are the people that God's going to send you out to this year to bring into the house of God, to bring into the faith, to bring into life. Now listen, look at me for a minute. David wrote in Psalm 23 that God, he is my shepherd, the Lord, right? 
That means we are, boy, good guess. You guys, you guys are sharp this morning. I can just see your minds twirling. Some of your eyes were twirling too, but we won't go into that. You are sheep. You're God's sheep. And sheep beget other sheep for the church to grow, for the people to get the, get the message that Jesus wants to give to them, that they can be free, that they don't have to be lonely, they don't have to feel rejected, they don't have to feel like they have no worth. Bring them here. Get them in here in Jesus. Let God do the work. You don't have to preach to them. You don't have to be mean to them. You don't have to push them. You just tell them, hey, come to church. It's fun. You'll enjoy yourself, and it's very short. Amen. Well, two out of three ain't bad. God has sent us here for people who know they need help. There's people out there that want help, but they don't care. They don't want they don't want to get it. Do you know people who really need help? That want to get the help? Bring them here. That is the vision of New Life Fellowship, pure and simple. Amen? We are here to reach those lost people who've led ungodly lives, who feel like they are so rejected and hurt that they'll never have a good life. Hallelujah. Yes, you can. Jesus didn't go to the cross for nothing. He went to the cross for you. Hallelujah. So you can get everything that God has for you, which is a wonderful life. Can you say that, amen, a wonderful life for us? Now, we are also, phase two of New Life Fellowship is to be a filling station for Christians on the run. There's a lot of Christians out there that have been hurt, a lot of Christian refugees, man. They've been in the battle. They've been hurt. They've been wounded. They feel like pastors have hurt them or churches have hurt them whatnot, you know, and you're not supposed to get hurt when you go to church, which is a lie from the enemy. I want you to hear this. This is a hard thing for me to even tell you, but it's true. One of the ch places you'll get hurt the most is going to be in church. you got to learn to overcome that. You have to learn that that's just the way it is. That's just life. People are broken. Even Christian people sometimes live broken. Hallelujah. So we are a filling station for hurt, disillusioned brothers and sisters in Christ. And they may come in, they may get filled up, and they may leave. They may come in, they may get filled up, and they may stay. It doesn't matter. We're just here, uh, okay, you want leaded, or do you want unleaded? Because we're going to give it to you, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to fill you up. Hallelujah. And you're going to go out of here? Yes. Feeling a little bit better than you when you came in. Now, the third thing that we want to do this year and this it encompasses all of you, but this is going to take your desire to want to do this. This is going to take your energy, your prioritizing your time, because our goal for you is that you grow in your faith as a child of God. Did we not sing that this morning? I am a child of God. Yes, I am. We were talking Thursday in renewal. Sometimes we don't believe things till we hear them over and over and over again. So if you come to service and you hear me say the same things over and over again, it's for a reason. You know what the reason is? You need to hear it over and over again. But I think I heard that one before. Yeah, I think you did too, but you need to hear it again and again and again. When I was a young Christian, I made a big mistake. Brother Good would get up every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, Every, well, actually, every we had Tuesday, Friday, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. It seemed like every time he got up in front of the church, he would say this. Oh, I don't have that big, low, deep voice that he had. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Just want you to know this morning that if any person's in Christ, you're a what? New creation. If you're in Christ, you're what? Yeah, you don't even. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is gone, behold, all is new. He'd say that every time. You know what my little heart said one day? I even said it out loud. Man, I'm sick of hearing that. Yeah, uh-oh is right. I heard it so many times, it started to go over my head. And you know what Pastor Good used to say? If it's going over your head, stand up so it can hit you in between the eyes. You need to be constantly reminded... 
fact, the Apostle Paul wrote in the Scriptures, stirring up your minds to holy remembrance of all these truths. And I'm going to remind you of a few today if I can get to them. We're not chair sitters here or bystanders or observers. God's not called you to not serve and just come here and get. You hearing me? If you really want everything God has, if you want to follow Him in obedience, get up off your behind, get in here and start helping. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you vacuum the floor, pray for the sick, go see Him in the hospital, give food to needy people, go down and clean the blessing room, come in here and ask me for something to do, or ask Connie. It doesn't matter, whatever, serve. Amen? Our call as a church is to make followers and disciples, not fans. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, it's coming to the point in the church of the living God where the Lord's going to get all the entertainment out of the church because we want to be entertained too much, and it's imbalanced, and it's time to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus in everything that we're doing. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of you need to really think about the way you're living because your lifestyle is not pleasing to God, not as a follower or a disciple. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I hear stories about Tom Brady, the quarterback of the New England Patriots. He's almost 40 years old, still playing in the NFL. You know why? He's the first one to get in the weight room. He's the last one to leave. He's the first one to get on the football field with those receivers, and they start after the, right after the season's over, and they start working on routes, and he starts working on passing to them. You're not going to make your Christian faith be what God wants to be without any effort. Your effort is to get your hiney here, get your ears open, get your eyes glued, get your focus on Him, get your book, get your sword of the Spirit, and start learning, start discipling yourself. Start getting under the discipline of the Spirit. I'm going to tell you something that you already know. Drinking and drugging is no longer an option for you. If you go there, you are going to waste yourself. Not only get wasted, but you're going to waste yourself. And you're going to find out that the repercussions and the consequences are going to be very nasty for you. Because once you come out of the darkness and you try to go back into the darkness, it's ten times worse than it was before. Hallelujah. Pastor Mark, that's good preaching. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. All right. How do you do this? You've got to get into the Word. You've got to get into praise and worship, and you've got to get into fellowship. I'll tell you what we need in 2019, my brothers and sisters. Look around. We need mentors. Mentoring is a big deal. God's called all of you to mentor someone else. Deb and I were sitting last night at home, had a nice big fire, getting warm in there, and I said, what movie do you want to watch? She said, I want to watch War Room again. So we sat down and watched, well, I got to watch some of it. I got on, stuck on the phone, but I watched some of War Room last night. And I'll tell you what, there's a big truth there, and the truth is this. When all of this was happening, and you gotta, I won't tell you the whole movie since maybe some of you haven't seen it. There's a lot of crying in it, but, um, because there's a lot of repenting in it. But at the end, the lady looks at the, the young lady that uh, has this big change in her life, and she says, I was standing one day, and I was praying, and God said, you need to pray for somebody else that you can bless, someone that you can help, somebody that you can mentor. And she said to this other little lady, she said, God sent me you. You were my answer to prayer. And she said, now that you've gone through this and you've seen what God's done for you and your family, now you need to find somebody to mentor too. You need to find somebody to mentor in here. Amen? Oh, don't jump up and down about it. I know it's exciting. You are invited to be a great big part of a great big move that God's going to do in 2019. But it cannot happen without your attention to it. Right? Hallelujah. For the first time in the history of this body of Christ, we're going to have a whole entire functioning building in 2019. We're going to have enough room for all your kids. We're going to have enough room to go play basketball. We're going to have enough room. To, uh, all our lunches will no longer be in here. They're going to be in this building behind this tin wall. 
It's going to be an awesome thing. The front offices are all going to be ours. We're going to have this all the way back to that fence back there. That is now New Life Fellowship. That's a great big move. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord willing, we'll close soon on all of this. But I want you to be part of this. Amen. God set you here so you can be part of it too. Now, this is some of the goals and the direction of the church. And I just want you to know right now that your enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call that knothead, is not happy with Derby Street New Life Fellowship. Hallelujah. He is going to attack this church relentlessly in the coming year. He's going to attack you where you're weakest. If you're right now in recovery, he's going to attack your recovery every which way he can. Hallelujah. Most of the time, because us that are addicts, I was a sin addict once a long time ago. I'm no longer there. God set me free of it. Hallelujah. He knows where to hit us. He knows we're selfish. Addicts are the most selfish people I've ever met. And I love you. I'm just saying the truth. If I don't feel good, I have to. No. Welcome to the life that God has put on this earth with the rest of us. You're going to experience disappointment, pain, sorrow, grief, uh, dis discouragement. Things aren't always going to go your way. Wah, wah. You're not going to get what you always want. I'm sorry to tell you, people will disappoint you. All right? And the drugs or the alcohol or whatever it is, some of you guys in here need to be careful what you're looking at on the Internet. Just saying. Porn is so easily available. And listen, they've done studies on what goes on in the mind of a human being when they observe porn and they get addicted to it. And it's the same dopamine issues that you have when you take drugs. It gives a person the same kind of high. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, if there's anything I can tell you about 2019, God's calling the church, walk out of this stuff. Let's be the church. Let's walk right. Amen? We're not walking right to be right. We're walking right because we are right. Don't get the cart before the horse. Do you follow me? Are you with me so far? Hallelujah. So I know in 2019, the enemy is not going to give up those trapped in darkness easily. He's going to fight against them. And he's going to fight against you if you want to get out of your darkness and start walking with the king. Now, the past few weeks, we focused on some things about the enemy and how he works. I'm not going to get very far with this this morning. His strategies, are basically, his strategies are basically three things. I want to slow down a little bit. I'm going to talk too fast. But John 10.10, 10, he wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy your life. That's it. You are hearing me this morning. He wants to steal from you the blessings that God's already given you. He wants to destroy your faith and destroy your will to go on. He wants to kill your desire to stay clean and to walk with him in everything. Amen? Hallelujah. B, his attacks occur in the human soul. 2 Corinthians 10.3 For though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons of our warfare, all right, are not of the worldly kind. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. I want you to know this morning that you're fighting a fight that is not physical, but it's in your soul. Okay? Your soul is your mind. What you believe, what you really, truly believe. You know how you know how what you really, truly believe? <laughs> you get tested. Amen? I'm trusting God, man. Uh, yeah? This is, this is the bank. Uh, we just wanted to know you're overdrawn $1,000, and uh, uh, we haven't been able to pay any of your bills, so Silk goes after you too. I'm trusting God. Really? Can you trust God when that stuff happens? Or are you going to say what a lot of people do? Oh, God must be mad at me. He's punishing me. No. You didn't pay your bills. Isn't it that simple? Say yes. Thank you. This is not complicated. The enemy wants you to think this is complicated, but it ain't. Hallelujah. In your mind, your will, and your emotions, the enemy will attack the human soul, and he wants to destroy it. C, we know he's like a lion, and we, he's looking for a meal. When lions look for a meal, you know what they do to the, to the herd, right? 
They isolate the tired, the weak, and the sick. So he wants to get you tired. He wants to get you so churned up. You've got so many things to do. I'm so busy. I just don't have time. You're so busy, and you're so weak because you're busy, and you're tired, and you didn't eat right. You didn't, you know, you're, you're still battling with nicotine, so you're doing that, and you're just battling with things, and you're going back and forth. You're getting tired in your mind. And then last but not least, then your physical body and starts to get sick, and the sickness of what you believe and what you think starts to come out. Remember, we all have what? Stinking thinking, correct? So you get all these things going on. That lion isolates you so he can kill you, steal from you, and destroy you. Come on. Hallelujah. He makes you an easy catch. 1 Peter 5, 8. Hallelujah. you got to be vigilant. Hallelujah. Vigilant. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, goes about like a what? Roaring lion. What do lions do? They want to isolate you. Remember, I did this last week. I didn't bring anything up here today to swing in front of your face. Maybe I'll, I won't use that. I'll probably distract you. Oh, I know what I'll use. I'll use my keys. The enemy is a magician, all right? He uses the power that he has to influence the way you think. And you know how he does that, right? Watch this. See? And here's what the enemy does. You're getting discouraged. Yes. You are feeling condemned, right? Ah. The more you watch my keys and you do not look at Jesus. Don't look at Jesus. Look at these keys. Yes. You are getting very, very irritated with the pastor. <laughs> it's all right. The pastor is too. He's irritated. But that's what the enemy does. The power of suggestion. Oh, you are not having fun being a Christian. Being a Christian is a drag. You need to go out and have some fun, right? Oh, yes. Don't pay attention to the word or Jesus. Just watch this. Listen to what I'm telling you. I know. I sound like that guy on that movie. But do you see what the enemy tries to do? He tries to give you suggestions, tell you those thoughts are yours, and then you know what else he'll do? Are you feeling lonely right now? Ah, you are. Yes, it's your fault. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm not saying anything. This is all coming from your little pea brain. Yes, now you're feeling very condemned. Oh, that's very good. You're supposed to feel condemned, right? Didn't God condemn the world? Yes? No. But see, the enemy's got this power suggestion, and this is a sad thing. We listen to it. And God's telling you this morning, reject he is no longer going to be able to suggest these things to you because you're not going to accept them. Hallelujah. Because here's what Jesus said about Satan. This is the letter D. He lies all the time about everything. He lies all the time about everything. John 8, 44. You don't believe me? Believe the master. He was a murderer, talking about Satan from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him. For he is a liar, the father of lies, and the father of half-truths. So when you go out and make a mistake, here's what the enemy says. Keep your eyes on my keys. You made a mistake. Ah, that's because you are a mistake. Yes. And you should feel very condemned for that because you did do it wrong, didn't you? Didn't you do that wrong? Come on, you cussed that time. I heard you. God heard you too. Now he's going to turn his back on you because you know it says in the Bible that if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's not what that means, but the enemy's a great twister of the truth. Did he not come to, at Jesus with the word? He will come to the, with you at you with the word. And so when he's trying to suggest that, remember he's telling you a half-truth, right? Are you guilty? Everybody say yes. I'm not going to argue with the enemy. Yeah, sure, Satan. Yeah, I am guilty. I screwed that up. Oh, but you know what? Jesus took all my guilt, took all my condemnation, and I'm free of it. That's letter E. I know I'm guilty, but I put all my guilt on the cross. 
And letter E is Romans 8, 1 through 2. There is therefore, I know this one by heart, there is therefore now what? No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How many of you have asked Jesus in your life? Did you know that when you do that, you're in Christ and Christ is in you? Kind of an in in thing. All right? Hallelujah. So there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Now, wait a minute. I did that wrong. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Right? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Woo! Take that, devil. Stick that in your ear. Hallelujah. In fact, I'll tell you what. Give me your butt because I'm going to kick it all the way down the street. Because once I know the word, you can no longer define me, enemy. God defines me. God defines you. Not your failure, not your bloodline, and not your past. Isn't that good news? Let's give the Lord a hand over that. That's good. Praise God. Amen. And I'll, I'll just end here with this because there's so much more that I have for you. So much more that the Lord wants to speak. And I knew it was going to, you know, every t as I was preparing for this, Connie, I kept hearing your husband's voice. I would be in the office prepping, you know, and I would tell Steve, man, this word is, this, I got 22 pages. You know what Steve would say? I think you needed to use that, uh, do that two Sundays, Pastor Mark, instead of all on one. Now, you'd think I would have thought that, right? But sometimes I feel like you guys are Thanksgiving turkeys. I want to stuff you with as much as I possibly can. I may not see you for another week, and I don't know what you're doing during the week. God does, but I want you to get filled with him. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. You're, you're all God's Thanksgiving turkeys. He wants to stick in you all the dressings of Jesus, man. He wants to fill you up with love and peace and joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woohoo! Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we sang this morning. More love. Bum, bum, bum. You know, I sing that at Thanksgiving a lot. More dressing. More mashed potatoes. Stuff it in here. Let me, Lord. You know what I'm saying? But God's saying to you, he wants to stuff you full of himself so that when you get up in the morning, it's not, oh, good Lord, it's morning. It's good Lord, it's morning. Hallelujah. Come on, enemy, let's go. I'm ready to go round one with you, buddy. Yes, I'm sure you are. I got to hear. You know what the enemy does, right? You think you're big and tough, huh? I remember what you did last week. Let me remind you. Enemy, you can't remind me. Why not? Why can't I remind you? Because Jesus just told me there is therefore now no condemnation for those who cry Jesus. Hey, the life of the Jesus is in me, and I'm not going to be, oh, I'm going forward and get out of here in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you guys need to pray for me. I think I lost my nut or something. But anyway, whoa. Jesus took our guilt and penalty so we don't have to. Second, you know, and I had a son one time when he was little. His name's Travis. He lives in Mexico now. I call him my little Mexican boy. But anyway, when he was little, one time I, was, I told him to do something. Adam, this is good because you have a son. I got a couple sons, but this one here is sitting next to you. And anyway, I had one. His name is Travis. He was about eight years old, nine years old. I said, Travis, I want you to go do this right now. And you know what he did? He looked at me and he said, Dad, I don't have to. Yes, he got in trouble. Let's just say Branson, he didn't have, he could sit down for a couple days. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But, you know, I did kind of get a hold of him a little bit and get his attention, you know. But I want to tell you this morning that you can tell the enemy, I don't have any guilt or judgment or penalty at all because I don't have to. Jesus took it. 2 Corinthians 5.21 our last scripture. For God made Christ who never sinned. Christ never sinned. He never, he got tempted tested just like you are. Yes, he was tested in every way that you can imagine just like you are. But he never sinned. He made Christ, God did, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. You know, I memorize it. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Aren't you glad that he's done that for us? He didn't know any sin, but he took our sin on himself. 
In Thursday night re renewal, somebody asked me a question that I'd asked God this many, many years ago. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, why did he say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is why. God who is perfect and holy, God who never makes a mistake, who is the creative artist of the world, who has the mind that we can't even begin to comprehend, all right, you know that this is him, correct? This is our God. He is wonderful and creative. He cannot look upon sin. And at that moment in time, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he noticed and felt by the Spirit that God turned away from him. Because he who knew no sin, all of a sudden, took all the sins of the world upon himself so that we could become the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that Jesus has done that? He was obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Now, we've come to a place, and next week, please be here, because next week I'll get into more of this, where we're going to be going through this thing that's going on between us and the devil. All right? There's some stuff going on. There's some conflict between us and the enemy. Do you know that? All right? It's like a war. And this morning, I wasn't... I. Boy, I really wanted to get to this, too, and I, I'll stop. But, uh, well, we'll talk about it next week. Amen. Stan, let's pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's cold in here. Can we turn the heat up a little bit? Hallelujah. I don't know what it's set on, but I see you all have your coats on even. It's, what's it set on? 72? I think we're going to have to kick it up to 76. I don't know, but I think it's cold in here. All right, bow your heads with me if you would, just for a minute. Father, I thank you for these wonderful children of the Most High God that are here this morning. Lord, I thank you that you're teaching us, Father God, to make war with the enemy, hallelujah, and to live a victorious life, a life of freedom and joy and happiness. Help us, God, not to look at the past, not to get offended by somebody we see in our present, even ourselves, God, let us not be offended by ourselves. But instead, Lord, let us walk with you in peace and confidence this week, I pray in Jesus' name. Before we go, does anybody need prayer before we leave? Just make your way down front if you need prayer before we go this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody? Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Some of you guys come down around Ty. Let's pray for him. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything in particular, brother? Anything in particular you want us to pray? Amen. You don't have to. Father, thank you for my brother. Right now we lay hands on him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, let blessings flow. Lord, I just pray for peace where there seems to be no peace. Father God, for, you, for a way to be made where there seems to be no way. And I thank you for the healing power of Christ flowing in this man's body and in his soul. Touch Dee today, too, God. I pray for her. I know she's ministering to her uncle and to her mother. I pray, God, for peace in that situation as well. And we just thank you right now, God, for the strength of Jesus, strengthening the man of God. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it. And we thank you for it. We bless him. Now, now Satan, we come against every evil work every evil thought, every evil scheme you would bring against the man of God yes. and his family. We break it off of them now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father God, that you said don't rejoice that you have power over the enemy, but rejoice rather that your names are written in the Lamb's book of eternal life. Let him be encouraged and stirred in his soul today, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, bless Kev. Touch Kevin, Lord. I pray for healing in his lungs. Touch his body. Keep him healthy, Lord. Keep him around for a little bit longer. We sure love him, God. And we thank you for Kev. Bless his guitar picking that he just gets so good, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that he's my favorite guitarist. We bless him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
please stay for dinner. We've got plenty of food. Lord, I pray you bless your people. Let your face shine upon them. Let your countenance, God, be in their face, O oh Lord, that they might see you this week in everything they go about. And bless our food and our time of fellowship in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please stay and eat. Go ahead and line up at the uh, buffet. Amen. In Jesus' name.